Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best premium scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the vintage release of the original 1966 Honda Superhawk motorcycle in 1/8 scale. This kit's been discontinued, but you can still find them for sale at online auction sites. A similar kit was issued as well, and this one has over 125 parts molded in red, chrome, clear, and clear red with rubber tires and some tubes for running lines and cables. The motor and the exhaust are multiple parts and are all chrome. The frame and the front fork forks are also multiple parts and they are built around the motor. There is not much detail to the kit because it's an old design and it's not on par with the newer releases but it's a great looking model when you get it built up. The only decals are for the speedometer and the tank logos and because it was older kit it didn't have any instructions but I found some online and sometimes you have to use those resources to build these vintage kits. Now those are typical issues that you'll run into but there's always some source that's got the information you'll need like right on replicas. Now I used some Alclad 2 because the chrome had been pretty well faded so I stripped it off and resprayed it with some of the Alclad 2 lacquer. Overall finished dimensions are 10 inches long, 3 inches wide and 2 and a quarter inches high. For the most part We'll be using Model Master's clear cement, but occasionally strength is required, so we'll use some super glue. And if there were any uh, clear parts, we, we would be using white glue to uh, glue those into place so that it dries clearly. And remember, any of the products that you see here, uh, you need to m be mindful of the manufacturer's safety suggestions for your own protection. After stripping the paint off in a, a bleach solution, uh, rinse it off with some mild soap detergent uh, and scrub it with a toothbrush and then let the, all the parts air dry. Now we're going to start with the, uh, the motor, so gather all the parts you see here to begin construction. Assemble the uh, front and rear plates and then attach the two top plates. Now add the carbs and install those there and add the ex exhaust part ports. Now paint this unit. Uh, all together uh, once it's dried uh, with some all clad chrome paint. Now get these parts out for the transmission and the transmission housing is assembled with the left side cover added and then the top cover and the caps are added and the gear housing front parts are assembled and installed. Now paint the whole unit all clad chrome and then paint the right side cover at the same time as this. I just tacked it into place there uh, so that it would match perfectly when I painted it, but uh, we're going to remove it and glue it into place later on. Once both units have dried uh, from the Alclad uh, lacquer, which is relatively quickly, uh, go ahead and assemble those two pieces together into a single unit. Now go ahead and get the frame parts out and paint those red. You can actually get some touch-up paint from the Honda dealer uh, to use but I just used a flame red uh, color uh, because it's a very close match. Now the cross member is painted black and the inner fork attachment is aluminum. Now assemble the frame with the fork attachment uh, it's in the neck there uh, without some glue. Now add the uh, motor and the cross member into place. I would use some super glue here on the frame attachment points so make sure you scrape off any paint uh, or debris that is located where the uh, attachment points are glued so that you get a good bond with the other part. Grab these parts from the kit and paint the kickstand flat black. The coil halves and backs are also flat black and the mount is aluminum color. Now the frame brace is red like the rest of the frame and install the frame brace on the top of the frame where the seat goes on. The kickstand is installed without glue and the coil sides are installed on each side of the tab on the frame and then the back is attached. Now grab these parts out of the kit, shocks, chain, etc. and this step is done in a sub-assembly and then added to the bike. So assembly A is going to be to assemble the frame rail backside to the front. Install the rail onto the chain guard and paint the chain steel with aluminum sprocket. So 
the rail is assembly is then painted red and then assembly B uh, you can put together both shocks and paint them alclad and then assembly C uh, is to add the rail and paint it red now final assembly on the bike loosen the chain cover on the transmission install the chain and the guard unit with a shock to hold in into the rear of the of the rail into place and then glue the transmission cover into place on the opposite side add the shock and the rail into place too now put the battery together and then paint it flat black and the oil cooler is aluminum color the brace is red now install the brace the battery and the oil cooler into the bike repaint the uh, rims and alclad with the alclad chrome paint to get that uh, shiny chrome look now we'll turn our attention to the front and rear wheels and note that uh, the rear front and rear tires are different sizes the rear is a little larger when assembling so make sure that you have all the proper parts for the right wheel insert the proper rim into one side of both the front and the rear tires and then add the proper opposite side to the tire based on their sizes now make sure to stagger the spokes and not line them up to give the rim a correct look here again we'll be um, assembling these into sub assemblies that will be added uh, as a unit later first assemble assemble all these pieces together and then put the front forks together by installing the lower connector and adding the disc uh, the uh, inner and outer forks to it then the speedometer unit is added to the one side and the brake disc and controller is added to the other side now the unit then is all alclad uh, and is been re going to be repainted for this build so the real bikes came with the fork covers either body color or all chrome as an option so they were uh, both available that way so I did mine in all chrome uh, so that it uh, had a consistent look and now assemble the pod halves and add the switch uh, in place assemble the fender with the mounts and paint the pod red and the fender speedometer bezel and headlight bezel are all alclad sprayed for the fork assembly you're going to add the fender into place on the forks and in the pod you add the headlight bezel the lens is attached with some white glue and then the speedometer bezel is added and the decal for the speedometer applied now install the pod uh, without glue and then using the kit supplied tubing cut a portion long enough to go from the speedometer unit to the headlight bezel now get out these parts uh, to install the pedals and the right uh, air cleaner and then paint the peg stand brake and all the linkages aluminum color and then the air cover is sprayed with alclad chrome the rear uh, brake disc linkage and arm are all also sprayed with the alclad and the filter is yellow and flat black uh, with a flat black tube the pedals and the pegs are flat black now assemble the pegs onto the linkage bars and the linkage to the mount now add the brake unit and pedals and install that as a unit onto the bike add the kickstart assemble the air filter and tube and install that now add the cover and the lock screw then assemble the rear brake and install that too we'll start working on the left side by assembling these parts into a group now paint the peg mount clutch and all the linkages aluminum color and the pegs are flat black the air cover is alclad sprayed and the rear fender is alclad chrome too the brake light unit is red and the mud flap is black the filter is yellow and the and flat black with a flat black tube the pedals and the pegs are flat black and assemble the pegs onto the linkage bars and the linkage to the mount then add the clutch unit and pedals install that as a unit onto the bike now assemble the air filter and the tube and install that in place uh, add the cover and the lock screw and then install the brake light and attach that unit to the fender now add the mud flap and install the fender onto the frame gather the parts for the exhaust and the mufflers 
and assemble the tubes and the mufflers uh, halves together and then paint those units with the L-clad chrome spray too. Attach the mufflers into place and add the tubes to the mufflers and the exhaust ports to line the mufflers up correctly all at one time. Now we can work on the gas tank. At this time I'm also going to run some of the lines and paint the tank sides L-clad with black inserts and the tank bodies are then painted red. Now insert the clear glass into the tank sides and, the, and glue the logo in from the inside. Now attach the sides to the tank bodies. Paint the cap aluminum and attach that. And paint the spark plugs aluminum and install them. The fuel regulator is assembled and painted aluminum and installed on the left tank bottom. Now assemble the tank halves to the bike. Run a tube from the rear brake to the brake pedal and run a tube from each uh, carburetor bottom to the fuel regulator. Then run a tube from the regulator to the tank on the opposite side. Run a tube to the coil and then the spark plugs on each side. Install the rear tire at this time and paint the seat flat black with silver trim. Then install the seat into place. Here is what the rear of the bike will look like with the exhaust, the tires, and the seat in place on the frame. Now we can get these parts together to install the front tire onto the forks. So assemble the handlebars and the top cap and then paint that with uh, that unit out with the L-clad spray and flat black hand grips. Now the top cap lock is black and assemble and paint the horn aluminum color. On the front frame attach the horn. The forks are installed without glue to the bottom of the frame horn. The completed handlebar assembly is installed on the top of the frame horn without any glue. And the only glue that you'll need is to uh, apply to the top of the forks uh, for the assembly there. Now add the top cap lock uh, to the frame horn and attach the tube to the clutch handle. Install a tube from the front brakes to the brake handle and this completes your build with no parts left over. Well there you have it. Now this vintage kit had been laying around since 1966 and for a 40 year old design it was still a pretty good fit and finish. Um, you do have to do a little work with flash and some of the connection points where the uh, sprue tabs are heavy. But overall the only consideration we had to make was because the chrome had basically faded off of the parts. Really the best way is to get the parts re-chromed but that can be pretty expensive. So I used the Alclad 2 chrome spray to give it a pretty good finish and resemble those chrome pieces that had faded out. With that being done this is a great little build. It looks great on the shelf and it really wasn't that hard to put together. The decals were a little yellowed and by putting those in a window with some sunlight on them it got a little better but you'll always want to try and use a little uh, clear spray to make sure that they don't come apart in the water. One thing that I did note was that the rubber tires were in perfect condition. They were just fine. The kit went together well. The forks and the frame were all pretty sturdy after assembly uh, and this was a fairly easy builder so you could really use this as an entry level kit for some of the more modern motorcycle kits that are much more demanding. All in all, it's a great looking motorcycle and it's a repli replica of the great little Honda that was out in the 60s uh, that we've come to know and love back then. And if you can find one of these, put it together and put it on your shelf. Well, there you have it. We hope you've enjoyed this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and always at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!